Hi, and welcome to the Aquafatis 3.2 New Features webinar. I'm Rob Underwood, and I'm the Senior Support Engineer for Aquafatis. In this webinar, I'd like to show you some of the exciting new features we have been working on. I'll cover the new enhancements to the Project Manager panel, the newly overhauled Smart Reading Enrichment, new features within Read Aloud, the support of PDFs and sub-layouts, the new sub-layout drop-down, and finally, the exciting Web Action Toolkit. Let's get started. Let's begin with some of the simpler new additions, and then we'll get to some of the more wow features. The AVE Interactivity Panel is now separated into four different sections. There is the AVE Mag, AVE PDF, EPUB Reflow, and EPUB Fixed sections now. This means that when you make a new project and begin adding interactivities, we have separated the interactivities into four sections so that you, as a user, will know which interactivities will work in the type of project you are building. For example, I have an AVE MAG project selected. When I build a frame and expose the AVE interactivity panel, the AVE MAG tab automatically becomes selected because I define this project as AVE MAG. You will notice that Reflow and Smart are grayed out. This is because those types of enrichments are not supported in AVE MAG. This is a simple addition to our toolset, but a much needed one. This lets a user know from the start of a project what interactions are supported in the four different outputs we support. Organizing your projects is now made simpler by the addition of folders in the Project Manager panel. You can now make folders based on your publications. For example, I could make a folder called Aquafatis Magazine. I could also make a project named February 2014 for the current issue. You can drag your projects into the new folders you create to make your project manager panel more organized. And don't worry, if you drag projects into the new folders, it doesn't physically move your InDesign documents from their current path on your computer or server. These folders are just for grouping projects, and projects can be moved in and out of the new folder feature at any time. Finally, the AVE Interactivity panel now contains a Get All Assets button. When you open the Interactivity panel with nothing selected, you will find the Get All Assets button. This was a special request from some of our customers that wanted to create a CSV file of all the assets used in a project. When you click on the Get Assets button, we run a script to identify all the assets used both in the InDesign document and within our enrichments. This is helpful because the Links panel in InDesign does not list any links used within our enrichments, such as movies or the slides of a slideshow. Once this is done running, you can export the CSV file for review in Excel. The new Smart Reading Enrichment makes it easier than ever to add this enrichment to your interactive documents. For those of you seeing this enrichment for the first time, this is an effect you can apply to text frames when you use AVE PDF as the project type instead of AVE MAG. This is an example of our Smart Reading effect. It also goes by the name of Guided Reading. When you use AVE PDF, you see one page when the device is held vertically, and spreads when you hold the device horizontally. Because of the large amount of content you see when the device is held horizontally, it can be a challenge for the user to constantly need to pinch and zoom and swipe the page to actually read the content. That is why we developed Guided Reading. Once you tag each frame with the Guided Reading Enrichment, the user just needs to double tap the text. The guided reading enrichment automatically zooms into the frame and navigation buttons appear at the bottom of each page. The users can simply click on arrows on either side of the screen to automatically be guided through the reading experience. Let's take a look at how to set this up in InDesign. In InDesign, I already have a project that was defined as a PDF and I've added the document to the project. You begin by having nothing selected on your InDesign page. When you open the AVE Interactivity panel with nothing selected, 
you will see the Customize Smart Reading Enrichment. Choose the Customize Smart Reading Enrichment. Click the plus sign next to Smart Reading to add your first Smart Reading Enrichment. You can have more than one. For example, you might only want Smart Reading to work until the end of Chapter 1. Then the user would need to swipe to get to Chapter 2, where a new Smart Reading sequence would begin. I'll enter the name Chapter 1 for this Smart Reading sequence. Then I'll click on the right-facing arrow to the left of Smart Reading. Setting up Smart or Guided Reading now is extremely easy. All you need to do is click on the icon to the right of the frame list. You can now choose all of your frames by simply clicking on them in the correct order on every page. Since this example just has one text frame on every page, I need to just scroll to the next page and select the next text frame for every page. You'll notice that the list of items will grow as you click on every frame you choose. Once you are done, you just need to click the Done button. You'll also notice that a tap action can also be applied to this Smart Reading series. This means that if a user taps on the text frame while in Guided Reading, an action can now be assigned. If you click the left facing arrow, you now go back to the main Smart Reading window, where you can add more instances of Smart Reading. All of these instances can easily be edited by choosing the arrow to edit each instance. This makes defining and editing the Smart Reading Enrichment easier than ever before. We have also added many new features to the Read Aloud Enrichment. This is an example of two of the new features added to Read Aloud. When I open the page that contains the Read Aloud Enrichment, you will notice that I have a play button that can control the feature. This play button has been set to toggle, so if I click it again, it will stop the Read Aloud feature. Besides having buttons that can now control the Read Aloud Enrichment, you can also define an action on a Read Aloud Enrichment that will automatically play the next Read Aloud Enrichment. When I play the first Read Aloud Enrichment, once the first one is done, the action on the first box will automatically tell the next Read Aloud frame to play. Let's take a look at how this is set up in InDesign. First, I'll select the Read Aloud Enrichment in InDesign and open the Interactivity panel. You will see that the audio file and the Karaoke Tune Prompter file have been chosen in the top of the panel. The first thing you should notice is that you no longer input your text into the Interactivity panel. Read Aloud Enrichments are now built using text frames in InDesign. You can now put your Read Aloud text directly into the text frame in InDesign. We've changed the way they are built to give you more freedom with your design. For example, in the old way they were built, you are only able to assign a paragraph style to the whole block of text defined in the panel. Now that the text is in a text frame in InDesign, you can style the text any way you want, with drop caps, italics, bold, different colors. This is now rendered correctly on output. The next addition is with the action to start the next read aloud enrichment. You will notice that in the action section below, I have defined an action using frame using frame picker. Now when you pick a frame using frame using frame picker, you can see the actions related to the read aloud enrichment. I will choose play. Since you can now define actions for read aloud, you can also make buttons to play, stop, pause, and toggle play as we saw in the last dropdown. This button on the left is set to control the top read aloud. I chose it using frame using frame picker and assigned toggle play. These new enhancements to the read aloud enrichment should open many new doors for you for both interaction and your designs. Using PDFs within your exported Zave is not a new feature but we have made it a lot easier and clearer for you to add these enrichments. In this example, I have a PDF and a frame. I can swipe the PDF to get to the next page of the PDF. Let me show you how to set up this enrichment. The first step is to define a frame on the page that you want to hold the PDF. 
you need to make sure that the frame size ratio of the PDF and the frame match for best results. Next, you apply the sub layout enrichment. In the sub document section, click choose and pick your PDF. Most of the time, you use sub layout by adding an InDesign document within another InDesign document. The ability to add a PDF is a new feature within the sub layout enrichment. Once you've picked the PDF, you need to define how a user will interact with the enrichment. For the scroll direction, I'll choose horizontal starting left, and I'll choose fit as the fitting mode. The most important feature to check is enable content navigation. When this is not checked, the area on the page becomes a dead area that won't allow you to swipe to the next page. With this checked, the user can still swipe to the next page. And that's it. Once this document is rendered, you will see the first page of the PDF. And when a user swipes to the left, the next page of the PDF will enter the frame. In this next example, I'd like to show you how you can make a pull-down menu using the sub-layout enrichment. Thanks to the new features in 3.2, we can finally make sub-layouts that drop down from the top of the page, since this was not previously possible. In this example, I have a pull-down menu I can drag from the top of the page to expose a table of contents. Let me show you how to build this enrichment. The first thing you need to do is define a frame in InDesign that the menu will pull down into. I'll make a frame that is 167 by 374 pixels. It does help to build out your interaction on the page to figure out exactly how this interaction will work as it does take a little math to make sure there is enough frame to show the whole drop-down menu. For example, you can see the menu I've created on the pasteboard. The TOC is at the top, followed by the pull here directions, and then an empty box. If I line up the box of both frames, you can see that the only thing that will be visible is the instructions to pull here. As I drag the frame down, so at the tops of each frame are aligned, you can see there is enough room within the sub layout frame to show the entire TOC. Now I can create the InDesign document for the sub layout. First, I'll copy the content I created and note its dimensions. I'll make a new document in InDesign to those dimensions. The width will be 167 and the height will be 700. I'll uncheck facing pages and also remove the margin. Now I can paste my content into this InDesign document and save it and close it. Back in the parent document, I can place that InDesign file into the frame. I can use the white arrow to line it up properly. Now I can apply the sub layout enrichment. The newly added feature is actually for the scroll direction of vertical starting bottom and fitting can be left to fill with scroll. When this enrichment is rendered, the frame automatically fits the content to the bottom of the enrichment vertically, showing only the pull here command. When a user drags down the menu, the TOC is exposed. And finally, I have one more new enrichment to show you, and I believe this one is the most exciting. We have had customers using HTML to create a variety of engaging enrichments since we began. However, the one thing customers always wanted to do was to have a way to control actions within your document from within the HTML you created. And I can finally say that we have added this feature. This means you can make buttons within your HTML that can launch any action such as show or hide, go to page, nearly everything you can do with enrichments can now be controlled by actions set in your own custom HTML. Let me show you how to set this up. When you apply the HTML enrichment, you will now see within the enrichment that you can download the Web Action Toolkit to learn how to create your own actions in your HTML page. You can begin by downloading the Web Action Toolkit and unzipping it. In the expanded folder is a README file that explains the basic setup. 
There are two JavaScript files that must be contained in your HTML folder. In order for the JavaScript to work in your HTML, you must include the following code in your HTML header. And finally, you can create custom action buttons using the HTML code. There are two DPE files you can import as projects into the Project Manager panel to test out this new interaction. I have loaded the simple web action DPE into my Project Manager panel for an example. This is the Zave file exported to my kiosk. You can see that if I click this button in the HTML, it shows or hides the frame on the page. Now let's delve deeper into how this is set up. In InDesign, you can see that I am pointing to a folder that contains the HTML. If I look at that folder, the first thing that you can see is that the two JavaScript files are contained in that folder and the graphic button.png. Now I'll open that HTML file in Dreamweaver. You can see the added code for the JavaScript has been added into the HTML header section. You can also see that the action and the button graphic have been added to the body section of the HTML. The action has been named My Action. You can add as many actions and buttons as you wish with different names. Now let's go back to InDesign. Because my HTML document is named index.html, that is what is defined in the main HTML page section. You will need to change this name if your HTML is named differently. The last step is to define your named actions in the action section. When you create an action within the action section, the name of each action must correspond to the name action you set up in your HTML. You can see that my action ID is set up as my action, just as it is defined in the HTML. You can also see that the action is set to toggle the visibility of a frame on the page using frame using frame picker. This is a very simple example of one action using toggle visibility, but all of the actions you can define within a button can also be assigned here. You can tell the reader, a layer, a frame using frame picker, or a frame using frame name to execute the same actions you can assign using the button enrichment. In the Web Action Toolkit download, there is also a more elaborate example you can import as a DPE file called culture.dpe. In this example, a customer can type their name into an HTML field to get a reservation for an upcoming show. Once they submit their request, a frame is revealed from within the Zay file to let the customer know they have reserved tickets to that show. If we take a look at InDesign, you can see that the submit button within the HTML has been named reverse dance. And once that button is clicked in the HTML, it reveals the hidden reservation frame. I hope this new feature sparks your imagination, revealing the new potential of using buttons from within your HTML to control all the button actions within your Zave. And that, my friends, is a brief overview of the new features contained in our new 3.2 version of the software. My name is Rob Underwood, and I'm the Senior Support Engineer for Aquafatis. Now go forth and use these new features to their utmost potential. And don't forget to submit new versions of your existing apps to the App Store using the new App Factory that was released simultaneously. Thanks for joining me.